Hello and welcome to the Exotic Pet Collective, where we talk about tarantulas, scorpions, and all pets exotic. I'm your host, Richard. You may know me from my YouTube channel, The Tarantula Collective, and today we are talking about the zen of tarantula keeping. We will discuss the benefits and life lessons learned from caring for tarantulas and scorpions and the unintentional positive effects they've had on my life. This week's episode is brought to you by the tarantulacollective.com. Find care sheets, lists of dealers and supplies, discount codes, and Tarantula Collective merch. Find all things tarantula and exotic pet related and stay connected and up to date with everything happening in the collective by visiting the website and signing up for the mailing list. That's the tarantulacollective.com. Well, thanks for listening to the third ever podcast here on the channel. It is awesome having you. And I want to thank uh, last week's guest. It was Alex from Tarantula Haven. We uh, we talked for almost two hours about um, tarantulas and snakes and scorpions and all kinds of exotic pets about his YouTube channel, his past, his, you know, how he, he got into keeping exotics. And uh, it was it was nice to get to know him. If you haven't had a chance to check that out. Uh, be sure to go back and give it a good listen. I had a couple other interviews lined up actually this week. Yesterday, I was supposed to meet with some people uh, virtually and uh, record a couple of podcasts, but um, just had some stuff uh, going on with my family. Uh, we were we went out apple picking and it's something we do every year around this time. And uh, unfortunately, it got scheduled the same time I had some of these podcasts uh, lined up to record. Uh, but ended up, we went out there and, and they were all like all the apples had been picked. They were like the orchards closed for the season. They've, they've already picked it clean. So kind of disappointing the drive was like 45 minutes or an hour to get out there and then there's nothing to do. So we grabbed some lunch and came back home, but I uh, ran a few other errands and just uh, some other things have been happening in my personal life. And it all just kind of seemed to uh, uh, just come to a head on Sunday. So I wasn't able to set any time aside to record some podcasts, unfortunately, but I am here today talking to you and make sure you stay tuned, you know, subscribe or follow this podcast on uh, whatever platform that you uh, are listening on. Uh, Cause coming up in the near future, I've got uh, the, uh, the couple that runs tarantula cribs. So we'll be coming on the podcast and talking about enclosures and why they started their business. And, you know, we'll, we'll get to know them a little bit. We talking to Gar from Arachno tube, uh, awesome website, awesome channel. If you haven't had a chance to check him out, we'll get to know him as well. Uh, Patricia from Tarantula he uh, Heaven is going to be coming on. She does the Spinneret Magazine. It's a, tr a magazine all about tarantulas, so I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to her. Um, there's other people. Uh, I'll keep them a secret, but, uh, you know, we got some dealers that are coming on talking about breeding and dealing tarantulas, and, you know, we're just going to cover all aspects of the hobby, everything that we can get into. So uh, I look forward to having those conversations and sharing them with you guys. Uh, today, though, I am talking to you about uh, what I titled it, the Zen of uh, Tarantula Keeping. And it kind of sounds like a weird title. Uh, but I, I just was noticing the other day, um, there's a lot of life lessons that I've learned just from keeping tarantulas. There's a, a lot of things that, you know, a lot of things that made me better as a person that I can directly relate to keeping tarantulas. Um, it's like a, a, a direct effect, I guess you could say. Uh, you know, I get, I get this question all the time. And uh, they ask it in a, a dozen different ways, but really they're just like, what's the, the one piece of advice you can give us? or the, the one thing uh, that we can do to be better tarantula keepers. Um, and, and my answer is always the same. It's, it's be patient. You know, if keeping tarantulas is going to teach you one thing in life, it's how to be patient. Uh, it's waiting for tarantulas to molt or for species to grow can take years. Sometimes it could take decades for a, a spiderling to become an adult tarantula. A lot of the species in my collection, I'm going to have until I'm a very old man. They may even outlive me. I hope not, <laughs> but I guess it's a possibility. And uh, it, in this in this society that we're in now, it's it's all about instant gratification. Uh, it's it's ordering stuff off of Amazon, getting it in two days or less. It's uh, ordering food from restaurants that don't deliver through somebody like Grubhub or DoorDash. You know, uh, getting that uh, within 30 minutes in some cases. You know, it's it's. Uh, just all the notifications and messages and, and, and just, it's, it's all about instant gratification. I, I want this and I want to get it now. And I, it's just the way life is and it's modern convenience. It's wonderful, but there's also something to be said about delayed gratification, having to wait uh, days or weeks or years for something to actually happen. And that's something that keeping tarantulas has really taught me to appreciate. 
It's, it's taught me patience. It's taught me to have the ability to enjoy that delayed gratification, to have the awareness to know that um, it's going to take a while, but it's going to be worth it, you know? And, and it's not so much about the destination as it is the journey. Like all the things that I will learn and experience watching this tarantula grow it far outweighs going and buying an adult female right away. You know, it's uh, get, getting fully grown tarantulas is cool. It's a lot more expensive in most cases. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's good to have a few adults in your collection. It really kind of helps you realize just how beautiful they will become. But, you know, I, I like getting spiderlings. And even though if it, even though it can take quite a while for them to grow to adults, I, I feel like I learn a lot more and appreciate them a lot more and, and develop kind of like a bond for it with them uh, and doing it that way. And there's a sense of accomplishment that comes with that. Um, like I know I'm not the one that's molting, but I feel like every time I have a successful molt with a tarantula, you know, I, I see that it's in pre-molt and then it flips on its back and it can be stressful. And, uh, it, and when it, it's successful and it, it flips over and it hardens up and it's all good. Like I feel, um, like I accomplished something <laughs> and, uh, like I apparently at least provided it the husbandry it needed to uh, be able to mold successfully. And, you know, it, there's, there's, there's very few feelings out there quite like that. Like not really having to do any of the, the work as far as, you know, the, I'm sure molting is very stressful. And uh, so I don't have to deal with any of that, but I, I get the enjoyment of a successful molt. And, you know, it's taught me that good things come in time. Like it's, it's uh, having to, to be patient and wait for something to develop makes me appreciate it that much more when it happens. Uh, especially with some of these Fonapelma spiralings I have, they'll, they'll dig down and they'll hide in their burrow for months at a time, it seems. I've, I've got a couple of Fonapelma mores and I know they're going to be beautiful when they're adults. Right now, they're just kind of like gray and black spiderlings and it, they're so slow to grow. Maybe in like 10 years, they'll, they'll really start to look like um, the tarantula I fell in love with uh, when I saw a picture of it. So there's no shortcuts in this game. There's, there's really no way to power feed a tarantula and get it to grow faster. You know, there's theories that if you, you know, have a certain humidity level um, and temperature and are feeding them frequently that they might grow a little bit faster, but it's also believed commonly that that means their lifespan is going to be a lot shorter. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of the give and take of that situation. You may be able to be successful and get, at least get them out of the spiderling stage a little quicker, but what you have to, what you're going to lose in, in return is uh, a shorter lifespan for your tea. So it's just not going to be around as long. And, you know, I, I can wait, I guess. Uh, I would rather have the tarantula for a longer time and just take a while to get out of its spiderling stage. You know, but when it comes to husbandry, uh, to enclosures, it, there's just, there's no way to, to kind of like take a cut corners. You know, if you use a cheaply made, uh, crappy enclosure because it was you know you could put it together really quickly or uh, it was very inexpensive it, you're gonna end up paying for it in the long run whether the tarantula escapes or it just breaks down you got to buy something to replace it um, you know it, same with uh, you know substrate sometimes you know you, you've got to do the work and the research and figure out exactly what environment it needs and if you just you know cut corners and you know, dig some dirt out of your backyard it, it could be disastrous yeah there could be uh, insecticides or pesticides or fertilizers or who knows what in that dirt uh, that could actually harm your tarantula you know, so it's it's all about being patient and waiting and uh you know enjoying that, that delayed gratification you know it's it's so much sweeter when it comes uh, you know my tarantulas have also taught me um kind of ties in with this uh you know I, I learned that good things come in time i guess from many things in life, but it really came home, uh, when, when I was, you know, waiting for spiderlings to grow. Uh, but it, I, I developed an awareness of that through, uh, keeping tarantulas. You know, I, one thing I do every morning or most mornings, if sometimes I sleep in and I'm running around like a madman, but you know, I wake up in the morning and I make a cup of coffee and I come down here to the basement and just sit with my tarantulas. Like it's, that's the one time of the day, nobody else is home. They've all gone to school and work and I can come down here for 20 minutes or so and just watch them. And you know, I'll turn the lights on. Most of the time, half the tarantulas are out and about and they'll just kind of chill. As long as I'm not making a lot of noise and, and, and just being still, they won't run and hide right away. 
I mean, a couple of them will because the lights will shock them, but I mean, not like shock them, but startle them. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's almost like a morning meditation. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here silently watching like motionlessly watching my tarantula stand there on all eight motionlessly silently, you know, I, and I become completely aware of my surroundings, like uh, what noises are going on around me, like outside or upstairs that might startle the tarantula. And, uh, cause it's doing the same thing. It's, it's listening, I guess, in a sense, I'm very aware of, uh, the, the light and dark, how it's changing. It's like clouds move across the, in front of the sun or something, or, um, you know, the air conditioning kicking on, um, or just movement of myself or the dogs or something creating like just different airflow. And I know that the tarantula is aware of all of that. It's using all of its abilities, all of its sensations or it, its senses to be aware of those sensations, to know if it's in danger or if it's okay. And, uh, you know, that's, it's kind of cool. It's almost like I'm meditating with my tarantula. I'm just sitting here completely aware of my surroundings, making sure I'm not moving or doing anything that might startle it. So I don't scare it away and I can enjoy it. And, you know, in a sense, I think I'm just sitting there quietly watching my tarantulas, but the reality is that, uh, I, I'm being, I'm developing mindful awareness. I'm practicing, uh, being present and mindful in that moment. You know, the, the tarantula is in tune with every movement, uh, and that it, it can sense. And by watching the tarantula, I also kind of become in tune with all of those. Um, and it's not just when I'm sitting down here, hanging out with my tarantulas in the morning. It's, uh, you know, I, I have to be very mindful when I'm rehousing the tarantulas, you know, when I, uh, am moving it from its old enclosure to a new enclosure, I gotta be aware of exactly where the enclosure is, uh, where the tarantula is inside of its old enclosure, what I'm going to do to convince it to either walk out of its old enclosure into its new one, where the tarantula is at all times during that process, or how I'm going to get it to a catch cup and transfer it. And, you know, there's just a lot going on. And sometimes I'm like filming that whole thing. So I kind of be, uh, also aware, um, is the camera on and recording? Am I in frame? Is uh, this in focus? You know, like all these different aspects on top of everything I need to be aware of for rehousing a tarantula. It, it can be quite overwhelming, um, but it's it it, may, it helps me like just forget about everything else. You know, like I'm not worrying about the bills. I'm not worrying about my boss or my job or you know anything else going on in life. I am 100% focused on the task at hand and being present and aware of what's going on. Uh, same thing when I'm, I'm feeding and watering. Like if I'm not paying attention and aware when I'm feeding a tarantula, it's very easy for them to uh, make a run for it or for me to startle them. And, you know, I, I mean, I got a lot of tarantulas that will just attack the water as I'm pouring in the bowl or they'll attack the bowl. Some tarantulas will pounce right on the cricket or try to grab it out of the tongs before I even let go while others get scared and will like run laps around their enclosure when, because of a, a cricket startled them, <laughs> you know, it's so I have to be, a hundred percent, uh, present and aware of where my hands are and how I'm going to react if the tarantula does something and you know what the tarantula is doing, uh, all these things, all these interactions with, uh, different tarantulas or scorpions, they really require you being present in the moment and mindful and just, just, just aware, not thinking about, uh, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or what you're going to do tomorrow or what happened yesterday. You know, it's, it's all about what's happening right now in the moment. Cause you know, I mean, the moment, like right now is all that's real. <laughs> Everything else is just memories or fantasies. Uh, so it, it's good to be rooted in reality for, you know, even if it's just 20 minutes or an hour a day while I'm interacting with my tarantulas. Um, you know, and, and I've set up these bioactive enclosures. Uh, I've got, oh, geez, uh, I, both my leopard geckos are in bioactives, my day gecko, uh, ball python, and my theraphosa sturmies in a bioactive my Asian forest scorpions, emperor scorpions, um, and, and I guess technically my isopods and uh, there's, there's a few others that I have set up or I'm in the process of setting up. And that has taught me a lot about my own life in the way of interconnectedness. You know, that there's a lot of different variables in a bioactive enclosure. Uh, what type of substrate I'm using, how much um, moisture is in that substrate, what kind of plants, how many plants, how much light are those plants getting? Am I using springtails and isopods? Uh, how, what type of isopod, what kind of isopod, how many isopods, uh, you know, and, and what it's, it's all for the benefit of whatever species is in there. 
So I have to balance the need of that species to thrive against the needs of the bioactive enclosure to thrive. You know, they're, they're maybe the, they don't, the, it's a tarantula that's in there and they don't like light, but the plants need light. So, you know, I have to find a good balance there, a good uh, cycle uh, of light and dark so that they both can be happy. Um, you know, I have to find the right temperatures. So, you know, it's, it's within the uh, comfortable range of the tarantula or the snake as well as whatever other little, you know, cleanup crew might be in there. Uh, how much humidity? I mean, there's, there's all, and the thing is like, if my humidity is really up, then it's, it's that, that one aspect being out of whack is going to throw the rest of the enclosure out of whack. If it gets too dry, then, you know, the springtails and the isopods might uh, start dying off. The plants might start dying off. You know, it's really a balancing act, taking all of these things into consideration and trying to get them in balance. And uh, it was just recently I kind of realized this in my own life. <laughs> it was like an epiphany where I was, uh, I was working 45 hours a week um, at my you know, day job and spending 45, 50 hours a week making videos and podcasts and taking pictures and just taking care of my collection you know, doing rehousings and feedings and all that, you know, it, it really adds up. Uh, not to mention like building the website and creating merch and just all, it, it's just everything tarantula related, tarantula collective related was uh, becoming like a second full-time job. And, you know, I, I was enjoying it. it. It was a hobby that was starting to turn into a business. And uh, I just I started realizing that it was causing a lot of problems in other areas of my life. I was not getting enough sleep. So starting to have health problems, uh, it was exacerbating pre-existing stuff. Um, it was affecting my relationships with my wife and my kids and, you know, uh, my, my, just my entire family and friends. Like it, it was just hundred percent of my time was spent at working one of two jobs and the leftovers, my, my small amount of free time was going to my family. And that was starting to create some, some friction and some resentment. And I had to address it. I had, to, you know, I, I was realizing this with my, my enclosure that, you know, I, everything's got to be in balance. And like, then in my personal life, I'm like just spread way too thin. And I was like, I gotta get my life in balance as well. Just like I do with this enclosure. And, um, you know, what I did is, you know, I just, I, I had to cut back on something. I was either going to stop creating content or, uh, quit my job. You know, it was like, those, those are the two things that are taking up the majority of my time. And I really enjoy you know, making YouTube videos and interacting with you all online and making these podcasts. And I, I had to figure it out. So, you know, I, I work uh, with a friend for a friend of mine and uh, I kind of explained to him the situation. I was like, my, my life is just, it's, um, it's, it's tough right now. It's all out of whack and I need to get some balance. So I need to cut back to like three days a week. Like that's kind of what I need to do or just like quit. <laughs> that was, that was the other option, you know, and it was scary. Like, make a little bit of money off of uh, YouTube videos and, and selling merch and stuff, but not as much as I make working. And part of me is like, I just need to take a risk and jump in feet first, but I'm also scared of doing that. So I really was trying to find some kind of like transition, um, maybe working part-time and then focusing on this full-time that free up enough uh, hours in my week to spend with my family and friends. And um, it, it was, it's kind of worked, you know, so, I mean, it's, it, I don't know if it's worked. It's been a week, <laughs> but so far it seems to, I get to spend a couple of days with my family and not have to worry about uh, either uh, job. So that was nice. And it's all because of people like you, um, you know, watching these videos and leaving comments and likes and joining me on like, in my Patreon community or becoming a member on YouTube, you know, all the different buying merch, all the different ways that you can uh, support the channel. It, it helps out even in small ways. It, there's, there's so many of you that it really adds up and uh, it, it could make, it possible for me to actually do this full time, which would be amazing. Um, and something I, I am, am passionate about and I really enjoy, you know, but it's, it's all the small details that, that make up the big picture. And, you know, whether we're talking personal relationships in life or we're talking bioactive enclosures for, you know, Goliath bird eaters, you got to pay attention to the small details and make sure that everything's in balance. It, it's a lesson that taught to me by my, the hobby, <laughs> by, by, by my tarantulas. You know, they also have taught me um, that I teach people how to treat me. Uh, my tarantulas have boundaries. The snakes have boundaries. The scorpions have boundaries. They, there's a line that they are no longer comfortable if I cross that. And there are consequences for me crossing that. You know, they, they're like, it's unacceptable for you to uh, get this close to me with your hand. And if you do, 
I, uh, the consequences will be, I will sting you or I will try to bite you. Or I'll give you threat pose. Um, and th- there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think that's very healthy. There needs to be consequences for unacceptable behavior. Uh, they, I need to respect their space and you know, the, the lesson to be derived from that, uh, as far as I'm concerned is that I also need to respect other people's space and people need to respect my space. You know, I, I have to have boundaries in relationships, whether they're work relationships or friends or family or kids or whatever. There, there's, there needs to be lines that are drawn and I need to have consequences, um, if people cross those boundaries, um, because if, if somebody is being very disrespectful towards me uh, or being abusive or rude or degrading or whatever it is, uh, whether, you know, I need to, if, if I just let them act that way, treat me that way, and there's no, you know, I don't say anything, I don't do anything, there's no consequences, effectively what I've just done is teach them that it's okay for them to treat me that way because I'm not going to do anything about it. Uh, you know, it, th- what's, but, the worst, what's worse, I guess, in a way is for me to say, these are the boundaries and these are the consequences if you cross those boundaries and then for them to cross those boundaries and, uh, not give those consequences. Like, you know, I learned that in life. Uh, I had a girlfriend. I was like, if you do this, we're over and she does it. And then I don't break up with her. <laughs> and then what I did is I effectively taught her it's okay for you to do that. Cause I'm not actually going to do anything. Um, so you, you got to have boundaries. You got to have consequences to those boundaries being crossed and you got to stick with them, you know, just like your tarantulas would do. <laughs> it's not, if my, uh, tarantula lets me know it's not cool for me to pick it up and I try to pick it up anyways, and it, it's not going to decide, well, um, I, I'll let you do it this time, but next time, no, <laughs> like it's, it's a hard fast. I will, uh, I will bite you or I will kick hairs or I will run or you know, I'm going to slap the ground or whatever. Uh, they, they definitely are not going to accept that from me. So I got to respect their space and, uh, I got to respect their boundaries and not just my trenches. I got to respect the, the, the people in my life's boundaries and make sure they respect mine. And I just think that's a, it's a healthy thing for us all to do. Uh, but you know, especially, especially me. And, uh, that kind of ties in with, you know, how I show appreciation. You know, I, I think that kind of sometimes in ways think the world still revolves around me <laughs> and, uh, uh, solipsism, I think is, is the, the word, I, I think my view of the universe is, or the, the, my view of reality is universally representative. So, uh, how I want people to show me love or affection or appreciation, uh, how I want to receive it is how I put it out there, how I give it, you know, and it doesn't always work, uh, especially like with scorpions and tarantulas. Um, you know, maybe I want attention and I want affection. You know, that's how I want you to show me, you know, I want you to do physical contact or something, uh, or buying gifts. Like that's, that's how I know that you like me or you appreciate me or you love me. Uh, my tarantulas are not like that at all. So, uh, they, they want space and no physical affection. So if I, uh, want to show them that I appreciate them by picking them up and holding them and petting them and playing with them, they're not going to be down with that. They're, that'll actually have the reverse effect. They was going to stress them out, piss them off. I, I have to understand that people in my life don't want to receive love the way that I want to give love. And if I want them to feel appreciated, um, I need to make sure that I'm showing them that in ways that they would appreciate, like feel appreciated. So like with tarantulas, like I got to, you know, take care of them, provide them with a good enclosure, uh, make sure they have food and water, you know, just provide them somewhere that's safe and stress-free and beneficial to their life. And that's how they'll know that I appreciate them. Uh, if I am, you know, picking them up and playing with them and poking my head in there and, and messing with their enclosure every single day, it's, it's going to stress them out and they're going to be upset. And it's just, it's not going to know it to work out good. Uh, I, I need to uh, take care of them with the knowledge that they're not going to show me any, any kind of affection back. And, you know, they, they want to receive love by being left alone. So they're going to show love by leaving me alone. <laughs> At least I hope, uh, you know, it, it reminds me of, um, this story. I talked about it in one of my YouTube videos. I think it was, uh, top 10 mistakes, tarantula keeping or something like that. I don't really remember which video it was in, but I think it was that one, but I was, I was talking about rehousing my OBT. Uh, it was in this like eight by eight, exoterra you know nano enclosure and i was moving it to a 12 by 12 because it had it, it outgrown it it was it was getting a little cramped in there 
and uh, I wanted to get in this new enclosure. I had it set up nice. I had all these cool pieces of wood and hides and, you know, um, just the little decorations. I was like, this is, this is going to look awesome once it webs it up. And it's really going to feel at home because I've watched how it set up its burrows and stuff and its old enclosure. So I, I made it to where it would, um, you know, just kind of just maximized its ability to do that. So I was really stoked about it. And I, uh, I, I started the process of rehousing it. And like most tarantulas, it, it did not dig it, you know. And at this point in my life, I had just moved where I am now from, I live like four hours south. And, uh, I had just like recently moved back to the town I grew up in. Um, I went to college and, and, you know, did a lot of stuff in my twenties and, um, I had ended up moving back, uh, moving back home, like where my parents lived and I had friends there and, and I had a job and an apartment and all that stuff. And, uh, slowly it all just started falling apart for one reason or another. And I was like, lost my job and lost my girlfriend and, uh, you know, I lost my apartment and, and just everything was falling apart and I was getting pretty angry and uh, upset and then I, I I met Kate like my is my wife now and she lived four hours north we met through a mutual friend and you know we started dating and it was just getting frustrating having to drive four hours uh, every other week to see each other and I didn't really have much here uh or there like where I, where I was living hold me there and I like had an opportunity you know uh get somewhere to live up where I am now and like where she, where she is living. Uh, and there was an opportunity for a job and, you know, there's all this stuff that it just seemed like it was the right move. So I, I moved up here and, you know, now things are great. We got married and we have a house and, you know, I got stepkids now, a step granddaughter, a uh, job I like and, and this tarantula collection and this channel and, and this podcast and everything's just been going really well. And the thing is like, I didn't, I didn't realize it's what was going to happen at the moment. I was, in the, in the transitioning up here, I was just angry. I was upset that uh, I lost my job and my car and, you know, it, just my life had fallen apart and everything had been destroyed. And it was, you know, I thought the universe was just uh, messing with me or something. Uh, and it wasn't until I was rehousing that uh, OBT that I kind of drew that correlation. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince this thing to get in the catch cup so I can transfer it. And it's just freaking out and slapping and showing its fangs. And I'm like, buddy, I'm trying to help you. Like there's something that's so much better right over here. I just gotta, I just gotta get you out of this old home and into your new home and you're going to be so much happier and so and things are going to be so much better. You'll be so much more comfortable. And it was like having that thought or saying that out loud. I don't remember which one it was, but it kind of dawned on me. Like I, that's what I, like, I was angry and resentful for so long because all this stuff fell apart in my old life. And the reality was it was like the universe was just pulling everything out you know, so that it could scoop me up in a catch cup and move me somewhere where I'd be a lot happier and a lot better, uh, better off, you know? And, and I think that having realized that now when things are tough and stuff's going bad, I have that kind of realization or that thought that, you know, maybe this is just the universe, uh, moving stuff around in my world, uh, to make it better for me, help me out. Um, you know, so, and and I don't know if you can relate to that, but you know, if you're in some, tough times right now. I mean, there's always that possibility that <laughs> it's, uh, it's about to get better. And, uh, it's really the universe just kind of moving stuff around, uh, to make it a little bit, uh, more comfortable for you in the long run. It's just from that OBT's perspective, it, I, there was no way I could communicate with it. No, there's no way for me to explain to it what I was doing. And in, in a lot of ways, I think that's kind of how my situation was like, there was no way the universe could really explain it to me. I couldn't see it from my point of view, my perspective. I, I just didn't have the ability to see it, the big picture. And, and if I had, I probably would have screwed it up anyway. So yeah, it's good that it worked out the way it did. And, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of things like that, that, you know, I get taught by my tarantulas. Um, but I think the biggest one, the most important one is, uh, just, the, I mean, it's the main reason I got spiders in the first place. I started in the hobby because I wanted to overcome my fear of tarantulas. Uh, and I, I got my first species. Uh, it was a Grimmastola rosea. Yeah, I was a freshman in college and I was keeping it in my dorm room. And, you know, at, at that time I was wearing like misfit shirts every day and tight Levi jeans and black Chuck Taylors and would just punk rock all the time. And big tough guy, you know, try to pick fights at the bar and then walk outside into a spider web. And, and just kind of like freak out like a teenage girl, you know? So I, I needed uh, to get over that fear. And I had a professor that was suggested 
you know, I think it's called immersion therapy or something like that. We'll have to ask Patricia. She's a therapist. So when she comes on, we'll figure out exactly what that term is. But uh, I, I thought that it would help me. And I learned through that process that my fear was actually not of the tarantula itself. It was just the things I didn't know. Like it was, my fear was based in the unknown. And I, the more I learned, the less afraid I became. And yeah, I, I mean, that's, it's kind of wild when you think about it. Like the more time I spent exposing my, like just the exposure over time to this tarantula led to a level of comfort. I just had it in my dorm room. And I would see it when I woke up in the morning, when I came back from class, it was always there and it was safe and secure in its glass enclosure. Um, and, and over time, you know, I was reading books about it. I was, uh, you know, learning what I could about the tarantula, um, you know, from other sources of literature, but also just from observation and finally like develop the courage through understanding to, um, and, and probably I got dared <laughs> or, or I was trying to impress a girl and, you know, I stuck my hand in the enclosure and convinced it to crawl on my hand. And, you know, I handled it for a little while and realized that it's not going to bite me immediately. It's, uh, it's actually kind of a gentle species. And I, the more I learned about it, the less afraid I became. And it, it was like, uh, my respect and appreciation became a lot larger than my fear. Like I was still, if it would bolt really quick or make a sudden movement, I'd still freak out. Uh, but even over time, I, I realized like when it does that, why it does that, what I did maybe to precipitate that and what, not just what that behavior means, but what it's going to do, you know, how it's, uh, it's not going to run really fast for a very long time. And it, it was, um, it, it, well, I guess what was kind of, I don't want to say life changing, but would kind of put things into perspective for me, uh, is, is that I, I, I realized decades later that that's a lesson that I don't apply enough in my life. Like there are still things out there that, um, you know, like, like making a podcast, for instance, I was, I was scared. I've been something I've been talking about doing for six months or a year. Um, but I was like afraid to do it. And it wasn't because I was afraid of speaking in front of people. Like it's pretty much the same as, uh, making a YouTube video. It was not that I was like scared of the genre in general. It, it was, I just didn't know how to do it. Like, I didn't know what platforms to use, what mics to use. There was just so much unknown. And, and that kind of kept me from progressing and uh, kept me that, that fear of the unknown kept me from doing something I wanted to do uh, and growing as a person. And it's not just like, it, it hasn't kind of just helped me grow and develop, but that's also the way I see other things. Um, you know, I, there's, I'm just kind of antisocial, I guess when it comes down to it, there's, uh, I, w I would rather hang up with myself than go to a party. Um, I wasn't like that as a kid, but you know, as I've gotten older, it's definitely become a thing. And I think that a lot of times, like I just look at somebody and for no reason, I, I just assume I don't like them. Like I, I'm not going to like them. <laughs> and it's, I thought it was just because I just don't like people, but I'm beginning to think and realize that or learn that it, it's just because I don't know them. And, and in a way I'm scared of what I don't know. And I don't want to take the time to actually get to know somebody because uh, when I do, usually I learn that they're not that bad. <laughs> and sometimes they actually become friends. And I know that for a long time, especially when I was younger, I would come into a situation and just be like, especially like a party or something like that. When there's a group of people and we'd just be very arrogant, maybe um, just like loud and uh, boisterous and like the loudest dude in the room. And it was not until much later in life I learned that that was actually fear-based. Like I, I was the most insecure person in the room and I didn't want anyone to know I was insecure. So I became the loudest person in the room to project like strength, that image or that illusion of strength. And now as I, when I see somebody doing that, instead of being like, dude, that dude's an annoying douchebag. Uh, the first thing I think is like, that guy's feeling pretty insecure right now or lady, you know, it's, it's a, a projection, a defense mechanism that I, I do. And I think that uh, other people do. And instead of just, uh, I don't know, dismissing them or being annoyed by them, I can actually kind of see it for what it is. Um, you know, much like the tarantulas, uh, they are throwing up th uh, threat poses and showing me their fangs and slapping the ground. And it's, 
and not because um, they want to be aggressive and want to intimidate me. It's, it's a defense mechanism. It's their way of being like, I am scared and I don't know what's happening and I'm freaked out and I, I don't, I don't want to get eaten or I don't want you to hurt me. So I'm going to try and scare you off by, you know, being loud and arrogant and obnoxious. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting to the parallels between dealing with tarantulas and dealing with people <laughs> I've learned. And, you know, it's, it's like my tarantulas have become my teachers in a lot of ways. His hobby has turned into uh, lessons that I didn't even realize I needed learned or reminded of. It's, it's great. It's helped me out a lot. Um, you know, it would, I mean, it, it, the hobby itself, keeping tarantulas itself has, has now changed my career path. And that's, that's mind blowing. I didn't get my, you know, I didn't start collecting tarantulas again, thinking that this would be, um, a line of work. I certainly didn't think it would be making YouTube videos and podcasts. And that never crossed my mind, but you know, I'm going with the flow and see where it takes me. And it, so far it's been pretty exciting. Uh, you know, but it's, I've met so many cool people because of this hobby. I've learned so much about myself. You know, I, I moved up here and not too long after I, I moved here and got engaged, my father passed away. And that's about the time my collection started blowing up as well. So keeping tarantulas helped me deal a lot with my father's dying. Like his, his death was, you know, I'm not going to get into like my childhood or anything like that, but we had a uh, difficult relationship for many, many years. There was a lot of, um, a lot of issues that were uh, not resolved and a lot of guilt on my end about things that I should have said or should have done or shouldn't have done years ago. And it was, it was therapeutic um, to be able to spend time with all of my tarantulas, feeding them, you know, whenever I was feeling like, you know, messed up in the head or, uh, you know, just sad. Um, I'm, I'm not very good at talking about my feelings and I think it drives my wife crazy. She'd want let's talk about it. And like, and no, I'm, I'm just going to go in the basement <laughs> and I could feed the tarantulas and, and really process a lot of that stuff. It, it kind of like kept my mind clear and focused on what I'm doing and, and could really just kind of like slowly work through all that stuff and, and get to a good place. And I think that had I not had um, a lot of tarantulas to care for during that time, it, I don't, I don't know how I would have had, I definitely would have handled it much differently and probably not as well. And, uh, yeah, it's, again, it just comes back to, you know, that's something I never expected from keeping tarantulas. I, I never thought that, uh, I would have the pe I would know the people that I know now, uh, all around, just not the country, but I, I mean, talking to people in Scotland and Spain and uh, all over the place, never in a million more, like I'm in small town, West Virginia. What in the world would I be doing talking to somebody in the UK, like, and be on first name basis, sending messages back and forth. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, from tarantulas that taught me how to interact with people, how to process, uh, a lot of emotion. And, you know, it just kind of, it's, it's just, it's been life changing in a lot of ways. And, and I know that sounds hyperbole is that the word it sounds hyperbolic, but it, in my case, it, it really has been. Uh, it, it's, it's helped me become a better father, uh, learning like, you know, how to be patient and, um, aware and respectful. Uh, so, uh, hopefully I'm also making me a better husband and a better employee and uh, just a better person in general. There's just a, a, a lot of things that maybe not even that the tarantulas taught me or that like keeping tarantulas taught me. It's probably most of it's stuff that I already knew I'd already been taught before learned through other areas, but I wasn't practicing it. Um, there's this thing I, I used to quote this all the time. Uh, it was just uh, something I heard somebody say. It was, and you could read every book there is out there about, um, swimming you could, uh, you know, watch all kinds of movies on swimming and, and see all like draw out diagrams and sit around and talk about swimming for hours, philosophizing about it. Like, uh, know everything that there is to know about swimming. But you don't know how to swim until you jump into the water. And, you know, that, that's kind of true with tarantulas. Like you could have all the information at your fingertips, know everything about keeping tarantulas. And it's not until you actually start keeping them that you, you're, it, you, you that's when you know. It's the experience um, that gives you the ability to know and understand. So it, like all that stuff, uh, I had been talking about this entire podcast. Like those are all things I knew. 
um, that I had been taught at one time or another, either by somebody or through something I read or just life experiences, but I wasn't practicing them. I wasn't actually getting in the water and swimming. So I, I, I just, I just had the information, but not the knowledge, you know, or I had the knowledge, but not the wisdom. So practicing it is, is paramount. It's, it's key. And keeping tarantulas reminds me uh, how important it is to practice these things in all areas of my life. And, and it's, it's great. <laughs> and it's, it's led me to be able to have this platform where I can talk to you guys. And I think that's just awesome. And I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, this is, you know, the third podcast and in the last two of, I think they've each had almost over 3000 lessons, which is, it blows my mind. Like I'm looking up information on how to start a podcast and they're like, Hey, your first few podcasts, you'd be lucky if you get like five or 10 people. So I'm like, it's already got like 500 downloads and like 2,500, 3000 views on YouTube. Like it's pretty exciting. You guys have been so accepting and welcoming and it means a lot to me. And it's, I'm, I'm glad that we can kind of have this back and forth and uh, all because of tarantulas. <laughs> so, uh, if you're listening, thank you so much, uh, especially if you made it all the way to the end of this podcast and be sure to, you know, follow me or subscribe or whatever it is that you do to get alerted. Anytime I upload new podcasts in the future on whatever platform you're using, I mean, it's on, on Spotify and, uh, Google podcasts and, uh, it should be on Apple any day now, if I'm not already. And when I say we, I, I don't mean like, I, I don't have a team of people working with me. I don't have any employees or anything like that. It's just me. Uh, when I say we, I, I am also including, I guess, all of those tarantulas and scorpions and reptiles behind me. It's like, we're all in this together. <laughs> so, so like they don't say anything, but they're here and I'm talking about them. So I guess that's why I, I say we, <laughs> that makes any sense, but yeah. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe hit that like button, uh, you know, all those things, you know, and check out the website. If you want to stay up to date, like I've been making, um, you know, TikTok videos, uh, and I don't know, posting stuff on Tumblr <laughs> and, and tweeting. And I mean, if there's any social media platform out there, you, you're pretty sure that you'll be able to find the tarantula collective there. So just go to my website, the tarantula collective.com, hit that social media tab. You'll find links to all the different social media accounts uh, that I have. If you want to just kind of stay up to date on whatever content I'm creating and putting out there, there's also uh, a full merchandise store, which with hats and stickers and shirts and all kinds of tarantula collective stuff as well. as uh, I'm putting out and some exotic pet collective stuff as well. So if you want to support the podcast, there'll be stickers and shirts there available. Uh, I think the stickers are there now. The shirts should be available pretty soon. And you know, the resources section has, lists of tarantula dealers from all over the world as well as people that make enclosures or tarantula art and some of them even like have uh, provided me with discount codes that i can post there as well so you can get like 10 percent off your order or free shipping or you know whatever it is uh, so check that out if you want to save a little bit of money and you know just find some uh, cool online tarantula dealers that will mail you almost any species your heart desires directly to your door and <laughs> no, no having to go to pet stores or travel into expos it's pretty awesome um, but anyways, I, I, again, I appreciate you all listening. Uh, be sure to tune in next week. Uh, we'll be doing an interview with, um, I forgot already. It'll either be, uh, Gar from Arachnitubes or Patricia from Tarantula Haven. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It could be anybody. I think I've got like, th why the double them up? So maybe like four or five interviews over the next week. So I'll just pick one and, and we'll put that up. <laughs> and of course, tune into the Tarantula Collective YouTube channel to, on Tuesdays. Uh, for the new episode of Tarantula Tuesday. Doing something a little bit different this week. Um, I'll explain it in the video, though. You guys, uh, just some transitions, kind of some of the stuff we were talking about today in the podcast. Uh, but I'll explain that in tomorrow's video. Uh, but at, at any rate, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate you joining me here in the Exotic Pet Collective. Be sure to come back next week for a new podcast. And uh, I don't know what day it'll be uploaded. I'm trying to figure out the best time to upload these. Um, you know, Tom Moran, from Tom's Big Spiders uploads his on Sundays. So I don't want to step on his toes. I upload a video on Tuesday, so I don't want to try to do two things at once. So I'm trying out Monday this week and maybe Thursdays or Fridays. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but I'll let you know as soon as I know. Uh, but thank you again for listening. I feel like I've said that like six or seven times now. And uh, I will see you uh, next week. Goodbye. <laughs>